In the beginning, they were just two people in love. She thought that would be enough. She was wrong. Daytime, nighttime, it didn't matter. It was always, it was always bad. When he hit the bottle, not even love can save this marriage from hitting bottom. When did you realize he had a serious alcohol problem? John Siegenthaler on country singer Lori Morgan's long, hard road down and back again. You've never seen this many feet, move this fast, have this much fun, or make this much money. He couldn't be found one day. And I went over to his apartment with a friend of his, and we found Keith passed out, and we had to rush him to the hospital. But I knew that I could, uh, I could conquer this with Keith. Welcome to Weekend Magazine with Stone Phillips will continue in a moment. And is Weekend Magazine's Stone Phillips. If you're not a country music fan, you may have missed one of the great comeback stories of recent years. Lori Morgan was born into the business. And if ever a path seemed paved with promise, it was hers. But along the way, right on cue came demons, heartbreak, and a world that was constantly falling apart. So how did she survive to sing her way to the top? Tonight, she tells John Siegenthal. These days and nights, country singer Lori Morgan is happy, performing before packed audiences, having eight top-selling albums, gracing magazine covers, winning major awards, and winning hearts of some very prominent men. Watching Lori, it's hard to imagine the heartbreak and tragedy she's endured and how blind love can lead someone astray. I would have never thought that I would have been able to handle what I handled. Daytime, nighttime, it didn't matter. It was always, it was always bad. Laurie started her career hopeful, carefree. She was born into a musical family. Candy kisses. Her father was the popular country singer, George Morgan. Laurie's debut came at age 13, when her father introduced her at the Grand Ole Opry. We got time. We could take the town in. Eventually, there would be television performances. Oh, Laurie Jennifer would marry a member of her band. A baby would soon follow, but so would a divorce. <laughs> Laurie then met Keith Whitley, a singer who Nashville insiders thought could be the next great country music star. Someone who would capture Laurie's heart, yet bring her great despair. Someone for whom Laurie was willing to sacrifice it all. He was like the knight in shining armor. Uh, that was that little bit of rebel and, and um, that really attracted me. <laughs> A knight yeah, whose I mean, kindness and strength reminded Laurie of her father. But her knight had a problem. A problem she first learned about from Keith Whitley's friends. They told me that I didn't know what I was getting into, that Keith was very addicted to alcohol. And I kind of blew it off to where they might have just been upset that I was dating Keith and trying to get me out of the picture. When did you realize he had a, had a serious alcohol problem? He couldn't be found one day. And I went over to his apartment with a friend of his, and we found Keith passed out, and we had to rush him to the hospital. But I knew that I could, uh, I could conquer this with Keith. You thought you could change him? Oh, yeah. I thought that my love for Keith would make him not want another drink. But will you love Lori's love made her marry Keith but her love would not deter his drinking. There were moments when Laurie was hopeful. Weeks might go by where Keith stayed sober, but then suddenly the drinking would start again. 
There were car wrecks. Keith totaled two cars while driving drunk, but amazingly was unharmed. There were trips to alcohol treatment centers. Keith and Laurie would have a son, and through it all, Keith's drinking continued. I remember at nights I would, I would tie my uh, ankle to his ankle with a, a robe belt so that in the middle of the night, if he had to get up, I would be awakened. But no matter what Laurie tried, her husband was on a downward spiral. There was even a time when Laurie thought Keith had died. I couldn't get him to wake up. I was getting no um, life signs at all. Laurie called 911, and when the paramedics and police arrived and resuscitated Keith, he became violent and spent a night in jail. There were days I was fed up with it. I thought, oh, I can't deal with it anymore. But I loved him so much. And, you know, maybe I was in denial. Lori learned of a dark side to Keith. On some nights when he was drinking, she would spot his car outside adult sex shops, go inside and take him home. And Lori learned just how desperate Keith was for a drink. She'd throw out all the liquor, but it wasn't enough. Of course, we never had alcohol at all to drink in the house, not even beer. I got rid of all the uh, cough syrups and whatever that had any kind of alcohol in it. Uh, everything had to be alcohol-free. That was because Keith was known to drink mouthwash, hairspray, cologne, anything to get his needed alcohol fix. Keith said, oh, I need to buy this bottle of polo. I said, Keith, you don't wear polo. What do you need polo for? He said, well, last trip out, I, I drank Joey's, and I need to replace it. And I thought, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. This is really sick. Laurie was putting her career on hold, sacrificing her own future for Keith's. She toured occasionally on her own and appeared in a music video with Keith, but she had another concern. Laurie and those around Keith tried to hide his drinking, wanting nothing to interfere with his rising popularity. Even longtime friend and legendary country singer Tammy Wynette didn't know how bad things were. I knew Keith, you know, had a, had a drinking problem, but I never dreamed that, you know, it would end up the way it did. The way it ended was something Laurie never dreamed of either. I was just flabbergasted. I, I was beside myself. If you drive just two and a half years after meeting Laurie, Keith Whitley, at age 33, died after a weekend of binge drinking. An autopsy would show Keith to have a blood alcohol level five times the amount considered legally intoxicated. And then I got angry. You know, I was mad. 30-year-old Laurie was a widow, left with two young children, and left in debt. A lot of bills to pay, uh, no will, no insurance, nothing. I didn't notice anyone come to me and say, here, we'll help you out with some of your bills. Not only were some in the Nashville community not helping Lori, she felt they resented her and blamed her for not being able to stop Keith's drinking. People are just heartless. They're heartless. And some of the Nashville uh, community embraced me, and some of them were very mean and very hateful. And from that point on, I said, well, I'll get by in my life with or without y'all. And Lori's done more than just get by. Give me that. <laughs> she turned her heartbreak into hits, becoming one of country's Thank few multi-million selling female stars. Totally and she's put her story in print in the just released book, Forever Yours Faithfully. Lori writes not just of her marriage to Keith Whitley, but also of some other noteworthy liaisons, like her relationship with Kenny Rogers. Kenny was the first one who told me to pull myself up by my bootstraps and get on with my life and be thankful for the years that I knew Keith. A few years after Kenny came Dallas Cowboy quarterback Troy Aikman. Troy was the love of my life. They'll always be a part of my heart that he will have. You wanted to marry Troy, didn't you? I did. I did. But I wasn't able to give Troy what he wanted in life. <laughs> 
and that was children. I um, had had a, a hysterectomy. It was very difficult for him to accept that he wouldn't have children. After Troy Eggman came a highly publicized relationship with Senator Fred Thompson. Powerful men are clearly attracted to you in all areas. Do you ever <laughs> think about that? All the damn time I do, John, to be honest with you. Tonight you're mine. Laurie has now moved on and married country musician John Randall with hopes that it's the beginning of a new and more settled chapter in her life. You sing, I didn't know my own strength. Does that really tell part of your story? About my whole life. We have to live through our heartaches, we have to deal with them, and we have to go on. But going on is the most important thing there is. Lori Morgan says that writing the book was therapy for her. She's hoping her story will make others understand that love is not a cure for a drinking problem. And recovery may require outside help or a doctor's care. Coming up next, what?